I'd be a little tiffed if I was naked for 70 years, too. What you're going to hear about today is nothing short of a miracle. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Pub Stomp, a podcast about games, TV shows, movies, and pop culture in general. Every episode, we discuss topics that we find interesting. Come join our shenanigans. Howdy, folks. Welcome to Pub Stomp. I'm Tyler, here with Maxi. Yo. And Trigo. Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, we're here to talk about Sandman today, which is a big, it's a big topic. It's a, there's a lot going on with this one. And it was uh, I didn't know much going in. Cool story. Mm-hmm. Cool. cool. All right. Uh, before we get into that one, uh, let's talk about some tech news this week where we screw over our friends. <laughs> uh, so everybody probably heard about the new graphics cards releasing. Yeah, man. I'm so excited because I was going to upgrade. <laughs> I didn't Just upgrade. upgrade it. Yeah. <laughs> what, what did you get? I got a 2070 Super. Oh, 2070. Okay. At the guidance of Maxi. <laughs> <laughs> is that what you have? You have a you know you have a twenty eighty, right? A twenty eighty super. Yeah. So But I mean nobody expected to see that announcement where they were like, Oh yeah, you know a twenty or thirty seventy is gonna be the equivalent of a twenty eighty TI. Yeah. Like, Not equivalent and, more powerful than twenty eighty yeah. TI. And it's gonna be cheaper yeah. too. How much is it? Yeah. Five hundred bucks? Five hundred bucks? 500 yeah those are the, are the reference cards right like i think once they are made by like aces and they had the strix branding it's like i add another 100 or 200 bucks to it mm-hmm. yeah. yeah i'm not mad i'm not mad because i was impatient so and I, ne- I needed something asap so yeah okay yeah I, I was looking i was like scouring uh craigslist and i was about to jump on one and i'm glad i didn't because now these are much better that's what I because that's what I do. I buy the previous version. Once the new one comes out, because usually the prices are like, ridiculous. But right. that was my th- yeah. That was my thinking. Yeah. I was like, I'll be fine. But this time but they're like super affordable. Like it doesn't it's like they're losing money at that point. I think I saw that they didn't make them more expensive because they lost a bunch of money when nobody upgraded to the twenty eighty or the two thousand series. Uh, me included. I did not upgrade to the 2000 series. There was two things going on. One was that, and then uh, Linus Tech Tips was talking about that they probably changed the way they're manufacturing. So in this new set of wafers or whatever, they're getting more consistent. So not as much waste. So that's in the long run, that's making them cheaper. Well. Yeah, but that that that's never that's never a reason to like. Why would they pass the savings to us? Like, come on, man, come on. <laughs> hey, man. Look. Fortnite made their stuff cheaper, and they passed the savings on to us, and yeah, got yeah, kicked whatever. out of <laughs> got kicked out of the Apple Store. Yeah, yeah, sure. Like, look, that's not how business works. Business is if you make it cheaper, then more money for you. <laughs> oh man, but yeah, yeah, but sure. That's why they could do it, right? All right, so I guess that's that's mm-hmm. fair. I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining. Oh, I'm gonna get a. I'm still don't know what I'm gonna get, but I'm excited. Thirty eighty. Thirty eighty. Yeah. No, no, no. Thirty ninety, man. Yeah, you gotta get fourteen hundred dollars. Like, okay, the problem is that I don't know if it's gonna fit in my case. Like as is the ten eighty. It. I have to remove the metal plate from the front, then shove it in there, and then <laughs> screw it because it's it's just too tiny. My case is not designed for that. Yeah, I was looking at them too. They're they're chunky cards. Yeah, they're pretty big. So that's that's the limitation. Yeah, I can see it. So you're saying your your card is too small for your case? No, my card is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. You talk, I might get, I might get an, ex- an extender and just like <laughs> hang it on the outside, right? Like just attach it to the outside of the case. That, that's fine, that'll, right? That'll probably help with cooling, man. Yeah, yeah it'll be like so fast. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, that's the news for this week, right? Just dip it in water while you're at it, too. <laughs> dip it in water. But yeah, that's the that's the hot hot. What is it? What do you call it? <laughs> I don't even know. Hot take. That's the word I was looking for. Hot take. Yeah. <laughs> Buy your graphics cards while they're here because they're probably gonna run out. It's true. If you see, if you see stock, just buy it. 
Everybody's waiting for those pre-orders on refresh every day. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, well, Mexi, you're the one that told us about uh, Sandman. I did not know anything about this. I didn't even know it was a, co- a graphic novel before. I didn't know who wrote it. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that, a little bit of background so that we know. I'm okay. sure some of our listeners are on the same boat that I was in. Sure. So we started the series Sandman. Um, Audible has adapting the graphic novel into a audiobook or audio series, as they call them. Um, it's based, it's from Neil Gaiman. If you don't know who Neil Gaiman is, he's an author. He also did um, American Gods, uh, Coraline, and just a lot of like the graveyard book, which is just the jungle book, only in a graveyard for all the emo kids. You know? <laughs> or if you want to be a metal kid, I guess. Um, <clears throat> but basically, he decided he wanted to make a comic book. And he created this book, and it's set in the DC universe. So there's a lot of things that touch on DC characters. They come up a lot. They even in the first couple chapters or episodes, as they call them, um, you hear about the JLA or the Justice League of America. <clears throat> so it's a it's set in the DC universe, but it's about this character called Morpheus. Um, and he's a cosmic being representing dreams. Uh, he's called Morpheus. I thought he was called the Sandman. He has like uh, seven different names. Yeah, he has like seven names. Yeah, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> so that's one yeah, of the big things, right? Like, I was confused. She was like, who, who, the hell is, yeah. who the hell is Morpheus? Who the hell is the Lord of Dreams? What? The? It, it's even more confusing. He changes what he looks like depending on yeah. who's looking at him. So, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. so they talk about. Uh, What's well, one of the big things, right? Like he doesn't have a real name; he just goes by Morpheus or Lord. <laughs> it's like whoever depends on who's talking to him, um, you find out more about him, right? So, yeah. But that's the rough. Like, what is Sandman? Where is it set? And who it's by? And you guys want to jump into like the story a little bit of where it goes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The- I guess if we were starting from the episode one, and I don't know if that's the way that the graphic novel was made by like episodes, but at least that the Audible is more like, feels more like a podcast. I was telling uh, Maxi that yeah, I listen to a lot of podcasts, and it feels more like a podcast because there's no there's a narrator, but for the most part, there's dialogue between between people, and they're acting out what they're doing through yeah. sound. If that makes sense. Yeah. So what's going on in each chapter? or each episode is a book of the original run. So the original run came out in like the 1980s. Um, so like chapter one is book one. Chapter two is book two. Like chapter one is called like, uh, I forget what it's called. Something Sleep of the Just. Sleep of the Just. Yeah. So that was like book, the comic book issue one. So it's split very much like the comic book run. From what I hear, they're pretty <laughs> accurate too, right? Yeah, so this is one of the, the big books, things. But... That's one of the big things is like they they've had a hard time creating the Sandman because like Neil Gaiman's very picky about it. He's like, I don't want people to make a crappy adaptation. So, you know, I don't blame him because it's pretty cool character, and I would be pretty like I don't I kind of don't want people to make it make it into a movie because they were gonna miss a bunch of stuff that that yeah. We'll cheap it and it's table. dense, right? So we're we're only covering chapters one through seven in this run, right? In this episode, but those are dense chapters, right? Oh my god, there's so many characters. Yeah, <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah. Cool, cool. Well, let's get into it. That way, we are not uh, just like dolly gagging here. Right. Cool, cool. I guess I'll I guess I'll start. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so open it, the, the, I guess the, the the series opens up when you don't know who the Sandman is. You don't know anything. You just see like. Uh, some, oh, I guess we should say this. It's going to be spoilers and probably trigger warnings. There's a lot of... This is not a kid's uh, graphic novel. Okay, so this out of the way. Uh, so you open up with, uh, I guess, cult members trying to like summon or trying to capture uh, a holy being. Uh, they Actually, they want to capture death, right? And they end up not catching death. They catch uh, the Sandman. Uh, and they don't know who he is. They don't know what they're doing. They just keep him in a place and they finally they figure out who it, who it is. And they realize that uh, he is the Lord of Dreams, 
so whoever is guarding him cannot fall asleep, right? Is that is the am I getting it right here? Yeah. Uh, so there's repercussions, right? So the whole point why they were trying to capture death was so that nobody ever dies again, right? Right. <clears throat> wasn't so, there like that? Wasn't somebody sold something or like exchanged something in it so that they could be like, if you capture death, you'll give me my son back or somebody? Is that, didn't that happen or or was that? Yeah. So the guy okay. who owned the book so that they could do the ritual yeah. was like, I want my son back or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, and then he gave it to the mage, the wizard. I don't know what, what we call him. Yeah. He doesn't last very long, so. <laughs> no. And basically, they wanted to capture him so that then they would have control over death, and then nobody would ever have to die again, and then the other guy could get his son back, quote unquote. Um, but what they ended up getting is Morpheus, right? Or the Sandman, in this case. They didn't know his name was Morpheus. But that has repercussions around the world. Like, people <laughs> who are asleep can't wake up anymore. People can't fall asleep properly because you can't dream you can't fall asleep because there's nobody there to make you go to sleep right and there was this lady who had was asleep the whole time and he, she even had a kid and then she like she didn't even know about this so in her mind she was like young but she was like older or something like something weird like that they explain in, in the novel so, yeah. some, so weird stuff is happening yeah by the way there's so many levels of wrong with that because she was asleep and she look, had a kid look man uh -huh. Like I said, this is, not a story. this is not a story for kids, okay? Yeah. Look, somebody made it happen. She was asleep. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so there's a lot of repercussions happening around the world, right? So you can yeah. go from there. So, uh, yeah, so, so a lot of stuff is happening. And I guess, like, he was captured. He was held captured for, like, generations, like, because they wanted him to. They, they kept them. Uh, 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 wanna, oh, wanna, no, 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 no! I want to say it was three score plus ten. That's the exact <laughs> word. <laughs> three score plus ten. I don't know what, how many years is that. It's seventy <laughs> years. Seventy years. There we go. Uh, so they they keep yeah they keep him in jail for seventy years uh, because they want him to give up and give them his power. But he's like, nope. He didn't even speak to them. He was just waiting for his chance. And some guy fell asleep, and he escaped. Uh, I think, uh, and then from there, like I, I guess he took revenge on, like not the or, or, original guy that caught him, but his descendant, his son. And that's yeah, his son. Well, because the original so, guy died at that point. Okay, yeah, that's right. Yeah, he already. Did. And then by that time, the son was also pretty old, right? So yes, yeah. So it's like, why won't you give me your power? And it's like because he doesn't even say anything. So. Dude, and the way he like messes with them is just basically like gives them nightmares forever. Oh, that's so right. bad. You ruin yeah. their entire lives. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> crazy. So, so that's that's pretty much the end of episode one, right? Like, I guess. Oh, well, I guess one important thing here: they when they capture him, they take away his. I guess what would would you call them weapons or like trinkets? Artifacts. Helmet. It was a helm. A helmet. Yeah. Uh, yeah so a that's stone. That's one of the big things, right? They talk about a lot of setup that happens in this episode. Yeah. They talk about um, his items or trinkets. It was a helmet. It was a ruby. Um, a bag of sand. A bag of sand. <laughs> and his clothing, right? Because he was naked for 70 years. I'd be a little tiffed if I was naked for 70 years, too. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> but um, but you also find out about what's happening to those trinkets, right? Like some of them get stolen by somebody else. They trade them off to somebody else. Um, the reason I'm being very vague is because it's part of the story in the future. So like, unless you understand who those people are, it means nothing to you. But yeah. so uh, the items move around hands, and people get them and trade them and stuff. But they yeah, don't really understand. Hmm? Right. Yeah, this happens over 70 years. Those things kept moving around. And that is what he's... Once he's out of captivity, his next goal is to go find his stuff. <clears throat> yeah. And that's basically what Chapter 2 starts off with, right? You find out about Cain and Abel. Um, if the biblical characters show up and they're pretty much mean to each other, or not, both of them aren't mean to each other, but Cain is, right? Yeah, so that's one thing that I don't know. Maybe I don't know if we want to get into it, but I don't, I don't understand like why one is able to kill the other one and then he comes back to life all the time. Like, I don't oh, know. it's a biblical story. 
that's why he talks to him when they meet. They say, "Oh, I'm the first story or whatever." Yeah. Um, like the first sin, greatest sin committed was Cain kills Abel. Yeah. Um, and as punishment, Cain was like cursed to like live forever or something like that. Um, but Cain, since he was an innocent, instead of like they gave him the option of living, so that's where that comes from. Okay. Um, too. That, that bit, the biblical story came out of nowhere. I was like, oh, <clears throat> what are these characters doing in the DC? Yeah, I didn't expect that either. I was like, where, where did you come from? I mean, you didn't expect that, and then you go to hell in the next step. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, so basically, that shows up, and they kind of explain, like, okay, there's a lot of layers to this universe slash world, right? Um, and then you find out Morpheus, the way his power works is by like he's been spreading out his power across the world so like he needs things to come back to him this is why like he's looking for his sandbag <laughs> i don't know how to say that better <laughs> uh, sand bag. Yeah. <laughs> literally a sand a bag of sand by the way um and then basically he's trying to go back to his domain right because one of the big things that they talk about he's like i am a king and all these other things right like, he, he's a big deal yep and then he ends up going to his castle and he sees that it's all wrecked, and one of his servants is like, yeah, bro, you've been gone for a while. This is what happens. <laughs> <laughs> and then... No upkeep, man. What happens? Yeah, and it, right? Like, if you don't take care of it, this is what happens. <laughs> um, so, and then he figures out, okay, I need to get my power back. Um, so, he's like, okay, I need to get my trinkets. So, the only way he could get that is by calling, like, these witches. And each witch will only answer one question, which by far, by far was one of the coolest parts of that episode, in my opinion, because they're kind of like the, um, did you guys ever watch Hercules, like the cartoon? Mm, yeah, yeah, I don't remember, though, but I, I, I did like watch these, it. There was these three witches that shared an eyeball, <laughs> so it was kind of like <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah, so, so that's the thing that it kind of goes, because the... He got, he was held captive on Earth, right? On the, and then he went to some other place to find these like mythological creatures. That was a dream realm. That was like, yeah, dream realm. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where I got like started getting confused. Like he's going, jumping back and forth between like planet Earth and then some other place. I guess it's called, that's what we call dream world. Mm -hmm. Uh, So that's that's, like the place that he rules. And then, yeah. Yeah, okay. And then I guess he meets the those three. Well, he summons them in the dream He summons world. them, yeah. Yeah, and okay, okay. Like, hey, come here. And they okay. show up. And they're like, what's up? And then he, like, flirts at them a little. And then they're like, all right, we'll tell yeah, you. Yeah, we'll yeah, tell that's you. Because, right. you know, when you're British, you're charming. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, basically, this is where it gets interesting because he starts seeing more of the world. Like, one of them tells him, like, a human on Earth has it. Um... The second one tells him, oh, a demon found it. And he's like, oh, I got to go to hell. And then you're like, oh. So they were like, this is an interesting world. In my opinion, that's how I thought. And then in the final one, he was like, um, oh, the League of Justice or something like that. And you're like, the League of Justice? Yeah. yeah. Justice, like the Justice League? <laughs> yeah. When I heard that too, I was like, I, I didn't, because I didn't know it was a DC thing. I was like, what the hell? Like I was like, how? What is this yeah. crossover? I was, yeah, like, I, the same thought. I was like, did did Neil Gaiman did he invent all these DC characters or what? I had no idea. <laughs> so yeah, it's kind of like the. I feel that bomb was a bigger bomb than like, oh, we got to go to hell. Like, the Justice <laughs> yes. League, what? <laughs> <laughs> like Batman Justice League? Yeah, I'm so confused. But yeah, and then basically he decides he's not strong enough to go to hell, and then so he goes to hang out with the humans, right? And then that goes into the next theme. So he finds out that his sandbag, so we're going at, <laughs> yes. is uh, somewhere on Earth and is linked to the DC character John Constantine, who admittedly I don't know a lot about, so fill in here. But basically he's like a, like a magician, super anti-hero, I guess. Yep. And, yeah. Is that? Okay, cool. I think that's the term, right? So anyway, <laughs> yeah. Turns out, uh, John Constantine's uh, 
girlfriend stole the sandbag from him when they broke up. Right, yeah. Um, so basically, the, the Sandman uh, Morpheus asks John Constantine, "Can we go get my sandbag?" And and yeah, John Constantine was like really agreeable. He's like, "Yeah, sure, let's go do that." And then they they teamed <laughs> up and they <laughs> they went and the they went to uh, basically his girlfriend's house, and mm-hmm. there was some really effed up things happening at that house. Uh, it was really graphic. Um, they were basically the people in that house were basically being like consumed by their dreams or their nightmares. And so John Constantine, well, mostly the same man, but they, they save those, save those people in air quotes, save those people <laughs> from the nightmares. Um, they give them a peaceful death, or, or at least uh, his girlfriend, a peaceful death. And then Sandman gets his sandbag back and things are looking up for him, I guess. <laughs> And then on from there, they start. They go to hell. Yeah, yeah, they go to hell. So I guess that's that's me. Uh, so, uh, yes, yeah, so I guess once he gets his sandbag, he's ready to go. Uh, I guess one of the things that is interesting here when he goes to hell is that he speaks with the the. I guess people people respect him because he's, he's the lord of of dreams, right? But like uh, I don't think anybody knows. Not everybody knows about him, uh, or they don't. Or, or I think things have changed. Or maybe, maybe you guys want to fill in here. But like it felt like he was, people didn't respect him as much. Um, people were like, "Who, who the hell are you?" Uh, and they were like, "Oh, dude, that's the Lord of Dreams." But then apparently Lucifer doesn't can control all the demons anymore. So when he was asking Lucifer for for his stuff, it's like I don't control them. So you're gonna have to uh, duke it out with whoever has it. Uh, and that's where, well, guess- kind of. So they talk about like there was like a civil war in hell, and like it became instead of Lucifer being like the leader of all of hell, it became a triumvirate. Right. So, so yes. Yeah. So, uh, a, a what? Triumvirate, I think, is the okay. word they use. Okay. Yeah. That's that's where like I didn't really understand, but essentially Lucifer wasn't the king or the the controller of everybody was like hey man i don't control these guys they got their stuff you have to get it back from them i can tell you who it is and that's it and the the, this this scene is a little confusing for me and maybe like i think maxi described it to us earlier in much more detail but uh essentially they he needs to i guess was would it be like a a rap battle or or like a how would you describe it like it's it's kind of i felt it was more like slam poetry than it was a rap battle (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like, yeah, slam poetry. There we go. Because they're like, okay, we're in a bar and there's some mics, and you're just saying things like, I don't yeah. know. It's hard it's for like, me to describe. I'm a snake. I'm poisonous. And then, like, the, one of them rebuttals, I'm an ox. I crush snakes. <laughs> and then, like, it, it escalates yeah. that way. Yeah, and they keep going back and forth, right? And then, uh, like, somehow, uh, the Lord of Dreams has to beat this guy to get his stuff back. And uh, it escalates. Uh, and at some point, there was like the narrator starts talking about like, okay, Simon sees all these things, and he finally discovers the the thing that these demons don't understand, and that is that is hope. And he says like, I am hope. And they were like, what? I can't beat that. And apparently, that was all it took, right? So I don't know. Did I skip stuff here? I feel like you skipped <laughs> it, like the escalation of arms, because one of them is like. I'm I'm a sun and I give energy or some crap like that, and then the other one or, or no one says I'm a supernova right, and then right after that he's like well, I'm anti life I destroy everything it's like whoa bro like there's <laughs> there's an escalation there and then yeah. Morpheus is like I'm hope okay <laughs> like, <laughs> what checkmate <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah I, I don't know I just uh, the whole thing was a little ridiculous to me I don't know. From, I didn't. I thought it was fine. I think saying "I'm hope" is like, what? Where did that come from? Like, you can be a concept all of a sudden. But okay, that's fine. Whatever it works. He gets. He gets his helmet back. He can be a concept <laughs> because he's personifying <laughs> dreams, which is also a concept. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but he has a sandbag, so it's kind of concrete. Right? <laughs> the reason we bring up the sandbag is because he uses it all the time. <laughs> like he's just like reach into my pocket, throw some sand around. <laughs> people go, go to sleep <laughs> go to sleep <laughs> but anyway that's that's the thing and I think uh, 
you said Lucifer is is important here because he gets his own spinoff series or something like that. That's they introduce the characters that also becomes his own show or his own like graphic novel. So I guess that's the the <clears throat> big the, one of the big things here. Well, from my understanding, Lucifer, a lot of the char- big big characters show up again more like through the show. Um, or not show, I should say. Book. It's seventy five chapters, right? So. Um, but there's a spin-off series called Lucifer. It's on Netflix now, but it used to be, I think, on Fox. And it's basically that type of Lucifer in his own show, solving crimes. Go figure. <laughs> but this is why this work of fiction is like really famous, right? Because it's referenced in other things. It created more stuff. Even like it's using big characters like justice league right so yeah i i honestly i didn't think much of lucifer in this like episode maybe like i didn't pay attention to his character so much but I, he didn't feel like a strong character maybe like in a different episode he'll be he'll have a stronger presence i don't know how you guys feel about that but that's just my my take here yeah see to, to me I, I thought that this was another like um set of side effects from um the sandman getting captured is like not not only did earth go to shit so did sorry i cursed again go to, <laughs> <laughs> so did hell so did his dream world and then oh. you know, that, that kind of screwed up with uh lucifer's whole like kingdom there uh, that's what so, i thought I don't know. so you're saying that hell went to hell went, went to hell <laughs> yeah <laughs> Maybe, maybe, yeah. maybe I misinterpreted that, but that, that's why I felt like he was a little weaker in this, but could be wrong. Right, I was like, Lucifer is supposed to be like, I mean, they, from growing up, they teach you, teach you that he's scary. He's the lord of all the demons, and then you come here, and he's like, all of a sudden, it's a democracy. Like, what the, what, what's <laughs> going on here? <laughs> uh, but anyway, that, that's, I think the biggest thing in this, in this episode was that, like, I guess, poetry slam. <laughs> yeah. We're calling with ridiculousness. Yeah, that was a poetry slam. As long as you have hope, you will prevail. Okay, that is the <laughs> message to take here. Yeah. <laughs> That's when I well, started re- realizing that the, uh, that the Sandman, that Morpheus, is not like good or evil. He's kind of a neutral the being. Because I was trying to figure that out the whole time. You kind of get the more understanding of how powerful he is, right? Because towards the end, um, the devil or Lucifer's kind of like, mm, you know, you just can't leave like that, right? <laughs> like, and he basically tells him, like, dreams have no power here. Um, hmm. and then he leaves sorry. anyway. No, well, that's where like Morpheus is like, um, uh, excuse me, sir, everybody's dreams, I'm out, <laughs> and then everybody's like, damn. <laughs> Yeah, that that and that like departure was so was good. Yeah, that. So that's how that went. It was an interesting. Like you're starting to understand. Like, okay, he's not like some weak sauce kind of thing. Like, it's a big. He's a big deal. Yeah. So after hell, we go back to Earth, and that's where the the JLA comes into play, Justice League of America. And this one, we start to get the uh, introduction of a lot of the DC characters, and. You might have to fill in on this one a bit. But basically, they introduced Dr. Destiny, um, who's kind of our like main villain. And if I back up a little bit, basically, uh, Morpheus is attempting to... He's going to the JLA because he knows that they have his amulet. I think it's the eyeball amulet thing. Mm-hmm. One of his three tools of power. He's trying to find that. He thinks... or he know, or the, One of the witches told him that the JLA has it. So he basically knocks on their door it seems like um they <laughs> meet some guy named john free um, no. they, they kind of introduce uh um dr oh. destiny you mixed the names up name oh scott. my gosh <laughs> scott free save me <laughs> scott yeah, because also... scott free is a funny name <laughs> yeah i got out of this scott free get it get it get it get it get it, get it, get it. all right go go go, go. Anyways, anyways, we get we get introduced to Doctor Destiny and Scott Free, who's a a JLA like what apprentice or something. He's like working at the embassy for the for the Justice 
Justice League? Mm -hmm. Was that his whole thing? Right. Basically, uh, he talks to to Scott Free, and uh, Scott Free says uh, he says, "I am looking for my amulet." Scott Free is basically like, "Hey, let me let me. I think I know somebody that uh, that might know where it is." And he let me take you to that guy, and that guy ends up being the Martian Manhunter, which is super cool. It's like a oh shit, Martian Manhunter like like kneels to Morpheus and you're like that. I think that's <laughs> when I started realizing like, okay, Morpheus is a, he's a big deal. And that's also when they explain that Morpheus kind of takes on uh, a different appearance, depending on who he's looking at, like to the, to the Martian Manhunter, he's like some Martian God. Um, if I listen to that properly, but anyways, um, uh, <laughs> Yeah, there was a funny joke in there about Martian Manhunter going to get some Oreos from the pantry. That was pretty funny. <laughs> um, and then, uh, so in this episode, um, the Sandman finds out that the amulet that he's looking for is in a storage facility for JLA. Um, and he needs to go there and find it. So he goes there and he finds it. And it uh, he finds out that it's actually... Um, has changed somewhat and it makes him weaker. Uh, and basically I imagine him like fainting to the floor. Yeah. That's how it sounded like in the thing. Or he passed out. I didn't, I didn't catch that. <laughs> uh, I, it, did it suck more of his power away? He has like a negative react. They don't really say what happens, but it's just like something like negative. You find out in the next two chapters, what actually happens. But basically, oh, actually, you find out in this chapter. My bad. Um, but he has some a negative reaction to it, and he basically faints, and that's what's going on. Yeah, basically, Doctor Destiny had modified it somewhat, or had become like its master. I guess. Yeah. That, that's yeah. how they say. It. And, and he, yeah, he modified it to. He modified it to be his and only his rock or whatever it is. Yeah, it was like his item. His item. Yeah. So that's kind of clever, actually. But that's kind of cool. That's just me. That's kind of, I think, the more interesting part of this episode, right? Where you start finding, like, you're having, like, these side conversations with this little old lady, and he's explaining his life, uh, Dr. Destiny is, right? About, like, oh, I found the rock, and I was, you know, I fought the JLA, and, you know, um, I was I was a master of dreams, kind of how he was like I was a dreamer, and they took my dreams away. That was something that he kept saying. Yeah, I mean, I guess we kind of skipped that lady when he, he hijacks some. He went, he made some lady take him to his place, mm -hmm. and he's acting all nice, and he ends up killing her. So that's like that. I don't know. For me, that's like uh, really like uh, how do you sadistic. Yeah, like it's almost like serial killer. Like, what is what is the word people use for serial killers? Um, sociopath. Sociopath. Yeah, yeah. Sociopath yeah. behavior. Like, I was like, he's gonna let her go. He gave. Oh yeah. She gave him. He. She gave him his jacket or her jacket, right? And then he just kills her. It's like, what the what? And then I don't know if this like arcs into the episode six, and then maybe we just don't need to talk about that. I don't know, man. It's like, <laughs> but anyway, I think we. I think. I'll do a really quick one. Don't worry, I got make, this. Make it fast, but this, but this is okay. by far one of the yeah. But anyway, go ahead, go ahead, Maxi, go, go. Okay, so I'm gonna make episodes quick, six quick. But basically, he walks into a diner. He basically is waiting there for the end of the world. He figures out well. He does, he knows what to do with the stone, and then just a lot of crazy things happen. There's murder. There's sex. There's suicide. I'm not gonna go into it because it's a really messed up episode. But when you guys listen to it, if you listen to it, you'll see. Um, but then you get a blurb of whatever's happening in that diner is happening around the world as well. It's basically a news report saying, the world is going crazy. And then cue back to craziness happening in the diner. That's episode six. Episode seven <laughs> starts where episode six ends, which is basically Morpheus walking into the diner saying, like, what are you doing? And then... Episode seven starts with the moment where he wakes up after being like blasted by his own stone. Sounded weird. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then he's walking across around the like the parking lot into the diner, 
and like people are screaming there's craziness happening basically how the news are saying it's the end of the world um and then he meets dr destiny um which is going by d at that point um because he thinks he's all powerful and they have a discussion about what the stone is how it was made what it represents and then dr destiny's like i'm gonna take this for myself and i'm gonna kill you and then things get serious and <clears throat> this is probably the coolest part in my head when i think about it because when they describe it he's like i'm gonna put them he puts on his helmet right and like oh they're going into battle now yeah, yeah. super cheesy i looked up <laughs> what the helmet, like they explain what the helmet looks like and then i looked it up and i was like mm, i don't know if that's the coolest thing yeah that's why you don't have to yeah when you're reading or like listening to stuff you don't, you don't have to put anything else because e- anything else somebody's going to describe or so show you a picture of it's not going to look like how you imagine it so that's why I think this is the best medium for stuff anyway. That's a tangent, but that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I imagine the same thing too. That's why I don't look at any pictures. It's all in my head. Like, that's yeah. all I need to know, yeah. <laughs> and, anywho, so he gets serious, puts on the helmet, basically opens a portal to the dream world, and then um, the guy like talks to the stone, his precious, and basically like, take me there too. Um rubs his feet two times or something i don't know it ends <laughs> up in the dream world because it was like he said that like if you're really if you think you're powerful you'll you'll fight me in my world right or something like that yeah because uh, he's taunting him basically to go into his world yeah he's like taunting him because that's where he's the most powerful right uh yeah. dream or uh they call him dream and they call him morpheus a lot everything anyways so he ends up they end up going into the dream world and then it turns into like this gladiatorial battle and then all of a sudden like he figures out that the stone is kind of a life force for morpheus so he starts using it more and more and the more he uses it the more the stone cracks until it finally breaks and then it just ends up like he ends up in the world of white and he thinks like he won and he's the best or whatever and then you kind of like they explain out like they do a zoom out thing kind of thing and he's like in the palm of morpheus like because morpheus is really light skin so he looks basically white um and then he starts talking to him like well he gave me all my power back but he also did terrible things so i don't know what to do but to re- reward you or um punish you right <laughs> yeah. so that's where you get you get like the same thing we keep saying like he's not bad but he's not good either he's like a fair person i guess and it just ends up where he takes him back to Arkham and basically says, okay, you're going to stay here, but you're going to sleep soundly and have good dreams. And then he makes the entire world go to sleep. Yeah. So I, I guess the, the part that maybe you glossed over was the when the rock got destroyed. Mm-hmm. I, guess like I was overusing it. Sandman got his powers back. Right. So that was like a big thing. Like, yeah. I guess... Like they kind of explain like, it when they're explaining. Sorry, go. Ahead. Yeah, that felt like a like a I don't know like, like weird like because I guess, I guess it's sci-fi. You can make stuff. You can make whatever up, right? It's like <laughs> oh, the stone broke because now he has his power back. What? Okay, whatever. Like I guess they made it work. He did say he made. He did. It, I mean, it is just making it up. But he did say <laughs> he made the stone from his power. So when it broke, he. I don't know. Yeah, it but that's have, like you said. Doesn't right? have to make sense. Yeah, it doesn't have to make sense. It kind of does make sense. And it, it's because we gloss over it at the beginning, too. So when he meets Cain and Abel, he asked them to give him something that belonged to him. And the only thing that they had was signature back in the day, whenever they got like these papers or whatever. And basically, he ate, a, ate the signature or something and got part of his power back. Right. So that's kind of like gloss, like. Hey, this is gonna this happened again in the future, right? Future being I guess I didn't even months. catch that. He did yeah, I, was like, I oh, remember that now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cool. So well, that, that's kind of again, you like you're saying it's sci-fi, so it can work however they want. <laughs> but this is just kind of <laughs> like this that was like the little one-off thing that happened to set up for that, right? Yeah, I, I, I'm fine. Like I can make it work in my head, but it's like ah <laughs> I wish I wanted to know a little bit more about like how that happened because it was like you're fighting and then like okay the stone broke because he used it too much and then bam he has his powers back and i'm like what but well that's one of the things too that they talked about uh when they're explaining like the backstory of the stone at the beginning of the episode it's like 
the more Morpheus used the stone, the more of its his power got sucked into the stone. Yeah. So like the more he used it, I'm assuming it was like it was it couldn't contain that power, so that's why it broke, kind of thing. Got it. Okay, I guess I guess I can I can reconcile with that. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> I, got, I got you, bro. I got you. Cool, cool. Cool. And then that's that ends that nasty section that that was pretty episode six was pretty pretty rough like <laughs> yeah so it was pretty two rough t- two times speed that one because that, that was a rough episode yeah. well i even had to like double take and ask you a question like is this actually happening or is it just something <laughs> that's like something else? i listened to that one in uh, albertson's in public with my headphones <laughs> i had a mask on and it's freaking weird man <laughs> <laughs> Tyler's yeah. just looking around like i hope nobody can hear this <laughs> It's yeah. awkward. Cool. And that, I guess, that concludes <laughs> one through seven, right? Yep. I I like this a lot. I thought that was a really good introduction to the character. Like, if you were Edge Lord back in the day when you were a kid and you read this, you'd be totally like, "Yeah, Morpheus is cool." Just not for kids, man. It's not for kids. <laughs> a lot of kids are. I could have done without six. You take episode six out of there. And it's it's a really solid intro to the story. I'm, I'm excited for the rest of it, for sure. Mm-hmm. It's a well told arc, I think. Yeah. Each episode, each episode has its kind of its own goal. It's like he needs his tools, and then there's three tools, and then in you know in one episode he figures out where the tools are. It every episode kind of stood alone in its own little story. Felt like a comic book, I guess that makes. Sense. Yeah, and there's a lot of build up. Like even now when we're talking about it, like. When we're like, oh, like it doesn't make sense why he got his power, but if you hearken back to like one thing that happened like three episodes earlier, you're like, oh, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. The stuff that's a little bit more weird for me is the crossover with the JLA. Which I guess I don't know if it makes sense or not, but it's it's the Ark Arkham is in this story or in this mm-hmm. world. And that's like it's is it necessary? Like, why? Why? To me, it, it it gives a different spin on DC. I felt like he kind of gave an origin story, maybe not an origin story, but like a backstory to all the crazy things that happened in the DC universe. He like oh, gave you a reason to explain certain things that happened in the world. That's kind of how I saw it. Okay, so we both went crazy because while like the dreams were being messed with, or like the stone was on the on the wrong. Um, right, like he was captured for all those years, and it had consequences, like like Maxi said, across all these different realms, and that just made crazy stuff. That that's kind of how I interpret. Okay, it. okay, I, I guess so. That helps. It doesn't help the Sandman arc. It helps like the other DC stuff be, have a reason for why it was like. Okay, I can I can, I see that. Yeah, I would agree with that. I mean, one of the big things in DC is like the multiverse, like a lot of like planes of existence and stuff and this kind of shows you like okay these are where the cosmic powers in this universe come from like it kind of explains some of the backstories right because you see um they talk about death they talk about all the other endless that's what the entities are called right um so i think it just kind of it's a nice tie-in and it kind of feels nice too where you kind of like oh superman because they make fun of uh batman in one of the episodes right yeah so that's kind of nice too you get to see like oh they're talking about batman okay okay it it needs a world to be set in i don't know if dc needed to be in there but it, it's kind of cool yeah and that's where like my like i didn't know anything about the salmon coming into this and i didn't realize that it's like a, a big big deal and like the author is like a big big deal too so like it's it's much bigger than just this i guess story or graphic novel it's just it's a, it fits into a much bigger place yeah and the way the way he uses the dc characters was very subtle too it wasn't like in your face yeah like when he introduces john constantine like it's a character that makes sense right like he deals with the occult the whole reason why he was there is because the occult okay it's a nice tie-in so pretty cool in my opinion Can't argue with that. <laughs> cool. 
I guess. And this this is like gonna be we're still not done with the with the uh, Audible adaptation of uh, the Sandman, but we'll have uh, I guess more episodes covering other sections. Mm-hmm. In the next coming weeks, we'll be covering some stuff. We got it. Jot it down. Jot it down. Cool, cool. Uh, I will probably pick up like there. I saw that there's like the Sandman annotated that ex- they explain a lot of the other stuff. I'll probably like buy that because uh, there's a lot of stuff that is not because I'm not familiar with the the universe. It's a lot of stuff that I need it explained. So, nah, man, we'll just cover it here. That's all content. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> fine. But like, I, I it helps me like understand what's going on because I wanna I wanna appreciate it. How about that? All right, that's fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Cool, cool. We got it here for tonight. Yeah, that's the intro to uh, the Sandman, and we'll we'll keep going on this. Sounds good. See you guys. Please. Please. Thank you for listening. If you like this podcast, please give us a star, heart, or leave us a review. You can follow us on Twitch, Twitter, or YouTube at Popstomp Podcast. That's P U B S T O M. POD cast. For more episodes, go to anchor.fm slash pubstomp. Music provided by 99 Lives. Credits are in the episode description. <laughs>